Hi, I'm Andrew Gillis with Leica Geosystems, and I'm the technical sales representative for Atlantic Canada. Today we've been tasked with surveying a site in nearby Dartmouth Crossing. We're planning to scan the building and perform a topo survey of the surrounding features with the end goal of generating deliverables of a point cloud and a CAD file complete with line work. I'll be working in the office while my colleague Dave will handle the field work. He'll be using the Leica Nova MS60 multi-station to collect scan data. And we don't have time to bring in control today, so we'll use a smart pole setup for that. With the GSO5 mounted on top of a 360 prism, Dave will perform an on-the-fly resection to bring MS60 data into our required coordinate system. And then while the MS60 is set up to scan, Dave will go with the tilt rover and collect coding and line work of the surrounding features in Leica Captivate. Dave's working as a one-man crew today, and there's a time crunch to complete this task. To ensure an accurate pickup, he'll set up the MS-60 in four different locations to get the best possible coverage of the building. Using the Leica Smart Pole solution to set up the multi-station means the point clouds will automatically be geo-referenced. For this setup, you'll need to fix your field controller to the pole, put your GRZ122-360 prism on top of the pole, and then screw the 5 8 thread of the GSO-5 antenna onto the prism. Next, all you'll have to do is power on your controller and establish a long-range Bluetooth connection with the radio handle of your multi-station. After that, we'll use the auto height feature on the Leica Nova MS60 to measure the instrument height with high accuracy at the push of a button. Next, we'll use the power search feature to trigger a prism search and have the instrument locate the target. Once the prism is found with target lock engaged, the MS-60 will follow David's movements with line of sight to the center of the prism. The last step in the setup routine is to use the smart pole to measure control points and compute a resection. With our setup complete, we'll go back to the MS-60 and create a scan definition. There are multiple methods of scanning available in the MS-60. Today we're choosing a band scan where we can select our upper limit and lower limit of the area to be scanned and everything within those two limits will be picked up in our point cloud. After defining our scan area, we'll select a horizontal and vertical scan resolution and then leave our MS-60 to pick up our point cloud. At this stage, the multi-station is operating autonomously and Dave can continue working with the GSO-5 tilt rover, measuring and coding points and lines. With a Leica Smart Pole setup, the efficiency of your field survey kit is unparalleled. Using the onboard Leica Captivate survey application and the multiple coding tools within, the user can code all measured features directly in the field. Points and lines can be created on the fly. Code lists can be created and geometries can be defined, simplifying the field to finish part of your data flow. After the data collection was complete, Dave used Hexagon GeoCloud Drive to send me a job with the point clouds measured with the multi-station and a second job containing all of the points and line work measured with the GSO5. I'd imported them into Leica Infinity for review. First I imported the job containing the line work and checked to see that it matches the aerial imagery. Thanks to the project code table that we set up in advance, the drawing is automatically generated, complete with point symbols and line styles. Next, I'll import the job containing the point clouds. I'll simply drag the file from my GeoCloud Drive project folder and drop it into my Infinity Project Navigator. We can see that the four geo-reference scans match seamlessly and the entire point cloud fits perfectly on top of the line work. I like what I'm seeing here, so I'll select my four scans, highlight them, and clean up the point cloud. Leica Infinity allows for reporting where we can assess the quality of the data, but in this case, we'll simply compare some linear features with the scanned features by zooming in, panning around, and seeing how well the curves in each data set line up. Now that the data has been QC'd, we could create deliverables directly in Leica Infinity or export our project to another office package like Autodesk or Cyclone 3DR. 
David was working solo today and we were in a time crunch, so let's go into the inspector and take a look at the time stamps on the first and last point of the job to see how long it took him to collect this complete data set. You can see here on the last point, it was taken at 549, and the first measurement in the job was taken at 409. So an hour and 40 minutes to do four resections, four scans, and collect over 300 topo points with coding and line work of the features surrounding the building.